Well, hey, Church, now that we're into phase two of BC's Restart Plan, I thought that this would be a great opportunity for us to talk about how God has called us to be the church in our city. And I want to do that by talking about two things. First of all, mission. And then second of all, we're going to talk about method. So when we talk about the mission of the church, we're talking about this really, really big picture and this really big plan of God, of why God even saves us and what God is even up to in this world. Now, one of the things that God says through the prophet Habakkuk in chapter 2, verse 14, is he gives us this glimpse of what God is up to for all of history. He says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See, God's plan has always been, and his plan will continue to be, to fill the earth with his glory. It's why God created us. It's why he saves us, so that we would reflect the image of God. But what did we do when God created us? Instead, we chose to live for our own glory, and that sin separated us from God. But the good news of Jesus is that in Christ, we can be forgiven, and we can come back into a right relationship with God. We can rediscover our purpose, which is to live for the glory of God, to see the earth filled with the glory of God. Now, every Christian, every church has the exact same mission. When we become followers of Christ, all of us, every church is given the mission that Jesus gave his church, which is this. You find it in Matthew chapter 28, the verses 18 through 20. It's called the Great Commission. So it's God's mission, first of all, and then he saves us and invites us to be a part of what he's already doing. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So the mission of every Christian church has always been the same. We are all called to reflect God's glory, to make disciples of Jesus. And so the way we talk about it here at Pleasant Valley is we we exist to see God's glory and the gospel of Jesus saturate our city and our valley. Now we understand we are not the only church in our city. There's a number of great gospel-centered churches in this city. And together we all want to see people come to know Jesus through the good news of Jesus. But we all use slightly different methods to fulfill Jesus' mission. And so what I want to do is I want to take some time to explain our approach so that you could better discern whether or not our church family is a family that you want to be a part of. And so you could better know how it is that you can approach the next little while while we can't gather together on a Sunday. How can you continue to fulfill the mission of Jesus as the church so that we could continue to see God's glory saturate our city and the gospel of Jesus continue to go out in the places where we live, where we work, where we learn, and where we play. So if the mission of our church is to see the glory of God and the gospel of Jesus saturate our city and valley, the question is how will we do that? How will we practically live this out? And this is where we move to methods. So when it comes to methods, um, we found it really helpful to use these four questions as a framework. And uh, just so you know, these four questions are really helpful in Bible reading. Like if you pick up your Bible every morning, you should be asking these four questions. It moves from uh, theology to Christology to ecclesiology to missiology, right? It just moves from uh, the practical part of reading your scriptures into actually living them out. And so we've been using these questions for years as a church. And, uh, you know, whether it's our elders or our staff, this is a lens that we continually come back to to get better clarity when we're moving from mission to method. And so these are the, the four questions. Question one is, who is God? How has God revealed himself in the scriptures? Number two, what has God done primarily in Christ? Number three, who are we? Who is the church in Christ? And then number four, how do we live? So let's take a look at that. Um, So Let's start with the first question, who is God? Who does God reveal himself to be primarily in the scriptures? And what we see is that we serve a Trinitarian God. So God reveals himself, first of all, most primarily as the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, who um, right away here, I'm just going to fill something in. I'm going to say that uh, he is the ascended one that he was resurrected and he ascended to the right hand of the Father and he sits at the right hand of God on his throne, ruling and reigning. So let me just fill that in. He is he is the king. So we have Jesus, or God revealed as a father, God revealed as Jesus the king. And then lastly, we have God reveals himself as the Holy Spirit. 
All right, so again, we serve a Trinitarian God, one God, three persons, who reveals himself in three persons throughout the scripture. So that's question number one. So if God is Father, let's jump to question two. What has he done through Christ? Well, if we stick with that familial language, we are adopted through the work of Jesus Christ, through the person and work of Jesus. We are brought in uh, to the kingdom of God. We are adopted in. If Jesus is the Son who is the King, then uh, what has God done through the king? Well, this king did something that no other king has done for us. He purchased us. We were rescued from a very awful uh, ruler. We were slaves of the enemy. And what Jesus did is he gave his own life. He gave the life of a king so that we could become, so he could purchase us and so we could become his children. And then uh, thirdly, um, what has God done in Christ through the Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit and he sent the Holy Spirit to empower us. He sent him to fill us. And then it's through the Holy Spirit that we are the sent people of God. We were sent out into this world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So let's move back to uh, to the Father, answer the, the third question. Who are we in Christ? Well, if God is a Father, if we are adopted, then what that makes us is it makes us family. We're brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. If Jesus is the Son who is the King, and we have been purchased by him, well, that makes us servants. We've been bought with a price, and we've been bought for a purpose, that we are to... We're to serve this unbelievable king. And then uh, number three, who are we in Christ in terms of the Holy Spirit? Well, we are witnesses. We're missionaries. So this then is our identity. We are family, we are servants, and we are missionaries. So then how do we live as God's family, as Jesus' servant, as the Spirit's missionaries? Well, as family, one of the things that we do is we gather. Now, while we can't do this on a Sunday right now, we do encourage you to continue gathering around the Word, um, around our study through the Book of Acts, and to keep on gathering your family and discovering what it is and nurturing one another with the gospel and acting on what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. So we gather. As servants, what do we do? We want to grow. We want to grow to be like our King Jesus. We are being sanctified through all of our life so that we could look more and more like Jesus Christ. And so we serve God. We serve the church. We serve one another. We, we serve the people around us because that's what Jesus did when he came. And then lastly, uh, how do we live as spirit-filled, spirit-empowered, spirit-sent missionaries, witnesses? Well, we go. We don't just stay inside and like keep this amazing message to ourselves. We go out into this world and we share the good news of Jesus. And then the last thing I would say is that as disciples of Jesus, we're also called to be incredibly generous to the mission that God has called us to. And so we give so that we can gather. We give so that people can continue to grow. We give so that people who are called by God to go in all sorts of different places around the world to take the good news of Jesus. And so we want to give towards all of that, towards the mission of the church, of seeing the glory of God, the gospel of Jesus, saturate our city and valley, and even to the ends of the earth. And so hopefully that's been helpful uh, to understand once again, to be reminded once again of the great mission that Jesus has for his church, but then also to see some of the methods that we are employing so that we can actually learn to be disciples of Jesus and see the glory of God saturate our city and our valley. So continue to gather around our sermon content on Sundays as we study through the book of Acts. Continue to grow in your relationship with God and with your spouse, with your kids and, and with your neighbors. And then lean into this whole process as we better learn what it means for God who's revealed himself as the Holy Spirit, who's filled us with his spirit and empowered us and sent us out to make disciples of Jesus wherever it is that we live, we work, we learn, and we play. And so I'm excited about that. I'm excited to kind of enter into this new phase and to, uh, to see what God will do as we seek to live out the gospel of Jesus through our everyday lives.